Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, as we've said, uh, my name is Peter Stacey. I've, I've only been at the Royal Northern College of Music since January this year. Um, and I, I'm the, the learning coordinator there now and I'm the first person to hold that position. So uh, it's, uh, they're quite new to learning technologies. Um, just to give you a quick overview of the sort, sort of size and nature of the institution. Uh, we only have 800 students. Uh, it's, it's purely a music-based college. Um, but uh, along with those 800 students, we have in the region of 400 staff. So we've got a, a very large number of part-time staff um, contributing to the teaching there, which is a, a, an extra challenge, I think. Um, obviously, the nature of the, of the college, is, uh, similarly to what Helena was saying, there's a very large amount of one-to-one -one tuition. And uh, it's part of what I'm working through at the moment is trying to find the appropriate role for the VLE, because obviously... The, you, you can't replace the one-to-one -one tuition. It's, it's, it's supplementing and supporting that. Um, the course, courses are largely split into the sort of academic and professional studies area, which is where I'm based, which are the more sort of traditional academic type modules, uh, and the principal study, which is the instrument study. Um, so uh, to reiterate, that the VLE's role is, is to support the existing mode of study. It's, it is supplemental and, and supporting and enabling technology. It, it's, it's, how I'm trying to, to develop it. Um, current use of learning technologies. Um, currently, we don't have any VLE in, in the college, uh, apart from there is a foundation degree that's taught by an external organization uh, in contemporary music practice, which, uh, popular music practice, sorry, which is, um, which the external organization have their own VLE, which, they, which is Moodle-based as well. And, and one of in terms of that, I'm quite keen to sort of link that into our system so that they become more integrated with the college because I think sometimes the students on that feel sli slightly disconnected from, from the college as a whole. Um, currently, the, for the majority of the students, they just they use the, the student intranet, the, the college intranet, uh, and the notes are just stuck on there. Um, I often say that that is my biggest friend, really, the intranet, because it's, it's very slow... Uh, it's very badly organized and everybody hates it. So as long as I can do something that's better than that, everyone will be happy. Um, the, I, the history that I have to be beware of, actually, is that uh, a few years ago they had an experiment with pebble pad. And for whatever reason, I suspect probably very little to do with technology, it was very, very unpopular and was abandoned very quickly. So um, I, think, I, I think that's, that's a, sort of a warning to me about what could go wrong if I, if I don't get it right. <laughs> Um, so there are obviously a, a, num a number of keen staff who, who use network, uh, social network technologies themselves and use that in their teaching. So people do use Facebook, for example, in organizing ensembles and orchestras, um, Blogger for, the, for, for hosting their, their notes and stuff, and, and um, Doodle for, for organizing uh, tutorials and masterclasses and things like that. Um, there's quite a lot of pressure from, from the students to, to have better technology. Most of the students, they're of the Facebook generation, they live their lives on Facebook. They can't understand why the college doesn't provide stuff in the same way. Uh, so I think there's pressure in that, that direction. And fortunately, we do also have uh, buy-in from the senior management. And I think that's why, that's why I'm there, uh, to, to try and promote it as well. So uh, that's, that's where the situation as it stands. Um, let's get just on to the technical side of things for a bit. Um, just explain how we... Actually, one thing I didn't mention at the start is that before, prior to working at the RNCM, I worked at Salford University where I managed the Blackboard installation across the university. So it's been a very interesting cultural change for me, both in terms of moving from a large institution where I'm doing something general across, across a, large, a huge group of diverse group of students to a small institution where I'm trying to build something very specific for, for a particular group of students, uh, but also moving from using a commercial product blackboard to, to, to an open source system Moodle. Um, so and it wasn't a very difficult choice, I have to say. Um, blackboard, the only advantage of Blackboard would, it have been, would have been that it would be easy for me because I already knew a lot about it. Uh, but clearly it's, it's very expensive, it has ongoing costs, and because it's uh, commercial, uh, it's very much harder to adapt it to particular requirements. Uh, so 
we decided to go with Moodle, so I've been on a, a very steep learning curve for about the last three months. Uh, it is cheap, and because it's open source, because it's written in PHP, it's much more readily adaptable to, to, to requirements. So I'm hoping that we can produce something that is really specific to, to our requirements. Um, following on from that, Moodle 2 came out in December of the last year. It's very new. Uh, not many people are using it in Angie yet. Uh, so a little bit nervous about using that. But on balance, there's really no choice because if I introduce something now and then next year tell people that they'll have to learn a different way of using it, that isn't, isn't going to be uh, very well received quite, quite understandably. So I think um, I really have to go with Moodle 2. There are some downsides to that. Um, a lot of the plugins that are available for, for Moodle 1.9 aren't yet available for Moodle 2, so I have a much smaller choice of tools that outside of the core functionality of Moodle that I can, that I can bring in. Um, I mean, one instance of that is that um, peop people are keen to have uh, online um, register taking in, in, in lectures, and there's, there's quite a nice plugin for Moodle 1.9 that does that not yet available for two. On the other hand, I've, I'm coming around to the idea that this is actually an advantage to me in a way because it, it forces me to try and keep it simple. I think someone mentioned in the questions there, and I think keeping it simple is, is a very key point. Uh, um, so I think that's it. probably going to be a, a good thing, really. Uh, and the other, the other advantage is that hopefully Moodle 2 is a step change, but that will mean that it won't, there won't be a major change for some time to come now in the interface and so on. Um, the strategy that I'm taking to, to try and implement it is, is, I mean, the requirements I've been given is that we need to have something in place for next academic year. Um, well, what, too, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I can't, I can't take that too, too, too literally. I mean, but my, my approach to it really is that I, I think that the way, the way to, for me to do it is, is to do the boring stuff first. So I'm focusing on getting admin and practical information in there so that there's a reason for people to be going into Moodle all the time. So um, once that's there, it's, it's mu it hopefully will be much easier to build the more, the more interesting and interactive uh, sort of pedagogically involved uh, approaches on top of that. Um, I'm hoping to make really the main hub for materials and communications with the students. Um, I'm hoping to move all the material that's currently in the, student, in the internet out of there so that there's we're not having students having to go to multiple places to find stuff. Um, and I'm also keen to have it fully integrated with the, the student information system uh, and network login. So this, it's very simple. Students will use the same login they use for everything else. And they will automatically pre be presented with the courses, areas for the courses that they are studying. So they're not having to go and find things. I'm, I'm trying to structure it. The, to fit in with the structure of the college, which is, is, is quite a lot different from, from what I'm used to in a university. Um, because there's the split between the, the, um, the instrumental study schools and the, the academic study area, um, I'm going to have to try and, and also then there's the, the programs that go across those. I'm looking currently to set up four different kinds of areas. So there'll be uh, an undergrad, undergrad and postgrad program information areas. So that's purely practical information across across the programs. Um, the academic and professional studies areas. These are the, the unit area or module areas. These are the sort of more conventional um, paper-based, if you like, text-based uh, academic modules, which are probably most similar to what I've been used to in other in other disciplines. Um, the instrumental schools, again, that's another practical thing, but that's, they're much more about uh, communication, announcements within the, each instrumental school, say the School of Strings, um, and enabling them to organize uh, tutorials and master classes and, and ensemble sessions in, in the simplest way possible. And also, going back to, I'm trying to, I want to get as much of the stuff that's done by sort of ad hoc 
methods at the moment to be done through the one through the VLE so that it's pulling people in there all the time so that's the place that they would naturally go to look for any inf information um, one thing actually that uh, I've been asked for by both the students and the staff is to, to make sure that all uh, assessment deadlines are built into the calendar so that they get flagged up well in advance because I think a lot of particularly a lot of uh, music students aren't that their primary focus in life is on their instrumental performance and that you know the academic deadlines aren't the things foremost in their mind so so just I mean I'm not looking to have online assessment or anything like that in the short term but it, just to flag things up to remind them hang on in, in two weeks time you've got this coming up seems to be quite quite something that might be quite useful um, in terms of the instrumental tutors I think that's probably at the biggest challenge if trying to reach them because they're a very diverse group uh, mostly they only come in for a few hours uh, and they, they may be at, when they're not doing that they might be touring with an orchestra they might be anywhere in the world um, what I'm proposing to try and do is to use the, the Moodle social format which is the simplest possible format uh, so it's basically a blank page that the tutors can post to, the students can post to, just to give them a space that, to communicate with their students. So again, those will be set up automatically. So a, a tutor will, each tutor will have one page, and their students will automatically be there. So there'll be as little admin overhead as possible to, to enable them to use. I think it, it, you know, I think if we got 20% take up of that, I would be over the moon, frankly. Uh, I mean, a, quite a number of these people don't use college email, for instance, so I mean, it, it's, it's not going to be easy, but uh, I think that's, that's very much the long-term objective, to start sort of chipping away on that side of things and try and get people involved. I think the college is very keen to try and also use the VLE to try and bring those kind of people into the college community as well, and I'm also doing work on the, um, the, the, the research areas within the college setting up forums and, uh, and common areas where staff can share their research interests. Uh, we can post uh, um, recordings and, and slides from, from research seminars uh, and, and things like that. Uh, just to give you a quick, a quick sneak preview of what, what it currently looks like, this is our test instance. Uh, this is using Moodle 2. It, it may not look like this in the end. I mean, it's, it's, in yesterday's session in the, the unconference and today, I think that the, uh, the concept of making things simple has come up again and again, and I think I might try and dispense with one of these columns uh, if at all possible. But the, the basic uh, concept of it is that they come in, they have a list of their courses, so they're not going to have to go and look for anything. There'll be a list of upcoming events right there as soon as they log in so the key information that they need should be right there um, I've also using the toolbar to uh, try and link it into all the other resources within the college as closely as possible um, and I, I mean hopefully in probably not immediately but in due course hopefully that will all be on single sign-on so that as far as the students concerned they go into the library catalogue they go into their email it's all one system they don't have to think about that. Training and support. I'm just coming around to this, this phase of the, the, the project. Um, initially, what I'm trying to do is, is, is target the core staff on the, the academic studies side of things. So the, the, there's a sort of small group, main, or mainly part of full-time staff that teach most of the the academic uh, studies and professional studies modules um, so trying to work with them do group starter sessions but also to be flexible and have drop-in and one-to-one -one sessions so that they have the, the most opportunity possible to, to get get started on it um, the, the process of moving stuff out of the current internet I think I'm going to try and use as an opportunity to say right this is our first objective sit down with them, get them started, hopefully hopefully get them doing something a bit more interesting than just literally moving the files, but, but at least using that as a starting point. Um, I'm producing info sheets, which, so I'm producing PDF documents with which how to do one small thing, so how to upload a file, how, 
how to set up a discussion group, things like that. I'm also using um, on a, a screen capture software to produce simple, short, this is how you do this, and just talk people through it, so if people are happier at being taught through something. And it, I have, should emphasize, these, the idea of these is not to replace one-to-one -one training, but so that if someone's been to the one-to-one -one training and they think, oh, I did that, but I can't remember how it was, they can just go and go to the, the House of Moodle page, click on it, and it will just take them back through it, and hopefully, hopefully they'll, they'll be happier with that. Um, again, as I mentioned before, the, the, the areas for the instrumental tutors, I think that's, that's further down the road. I think the first phase for September is to try, try and get as much as possible on the the sort of core academic side going. Future developments. Well, as I said, the, the, my first initial uh, approach is to do the boring stuff first. So I suppose this is the, the interesting stuff. Um, as, as Helena was saying, they, they use, just starting to use Mahara, and I think uh, Mahara would be very, very good for us. And I think it would be really nice uh, counterbalance to Moodle. Um, it, it's, it's useful. We are actually in the process of um, uh, revalidating our BMOS at the moment, and one of the things that they're trying to build into the modules of that are much more formally build in the, the professional development and portfolio development, and I think that's quite important for, for students who are going to go on and become professional musicians that to do work on, on building on, you know, websites and or online portfolios and CVs. Um, but I think Mahara brings a lot more beside that. I think it, pr it provides potential for social areas, for ensembles. There, there is a certain amount going on at the moment with people using Facebook to organize rehearsals and things like that, but that's not always uh, the, the, the most ideal way of doing things. Um, I think one of the problems with Facebook is that it's, it's people's personal space and some people don't feel comfortable with, with it being used for other things. So I, I think the, the big plus of Mahara is that from the student's point of view, it looks quite a lot like Facebook, so it's something they're familiar with. They understand how it works. Perhaps getting the staff to, to, to engage with it might be slightly more difficult, but I think uh, one of the things that students have been asking for is, is a space where they can upload performances to share with their peers and get their peers to comment on them. And obviously, they, they don't want the whole world doing that. They want their peers within the college doing that. So I think. A, a, Hopefully, a good starting point uh, for Mahara would be to set up just a, a general space for all the students to, just to, to post stuff up and, and share with their, their peers. Uh, another thing that I would like to develop and I think would support all these other things in the long run is, is to start using video streaming within the college. Um, and it was quite interesting. I, I've come from a university where we had a video streaming server and very little in the way of in-house developed content to put on it to a college where we have a recording department who video a great deal of stuff but, but most of which gets put on DVDs in the library so I think that there's a huge potential for, for that uh, in the college um, but, also, but, but there are also many other uses for, for it um, putting research seminars on again because we've got so many part-time staff a very small proportion of them can actually make it to research seminars so it will give them much more opportunity to participate um, and also, I mean, we, we have quite a number of uh, overseas students, so I think streaming, stream, live streaming of graduation, things like that, is, is a nice sort of extra, I mean, it's more on the marketing side, obviously, than teaching and learning, but I think it's, it, it's yet another uh, recent thing we could use that for. How am I doing for time? Um, finally, I just want to, uh, thought I'd quite like to reflect on my, my experiences of... Uh, Moving, moving to Moodle as a, a blackboard person, for want of a better word, I, I would hate to describe myself as that really, a person, a person who used blackboard. Um, I, I found it quite interesting, it's quite a steep learning curve, and I think it's, it's always the way if you move from, if you're used to using one system for doing something, I think you know, if you move from, from Windows to Macintosh or, 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 or anything like that, it, 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 it bugs you at first because you don't, it doesn't work the way you're expecting it to. Um, so I, it's, it's taken me a while, but I think I'm, I'm getting there now. Um, one of the things with Moodle is it's, it's very easy to install a basic version of Moodle, much easier than it is to install Blackboard, I have to say. 
Uh, but on, then once you've done that, there's a much longer phase of configuring it, which I think really just reflects the fact that it's much more flexible and there are much many more options in it. Um, it I keep coming up with things that I think it doesn't do, uh, and then I find that, in fact, it does do it, but I just haven't figured out how it does it. So um, uh, sometimes I, th I find it a bit obscure, but that, that's probably because I'm thinking in a, in a blackboard way. Um, from the administrator point of view, I find it slightly frustrating because it, it doesn't have lots of built-in tools, and I think that's, again, part of the culture. It's, it's generally run by technical people who build, just build their own systems. And I mean, I've had to do a bit of that around Blackboard, but it, 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 there are things that I would have expected it to have out of the box, which it doesn't. Um, on the other hand, it's, it's easier to implement things for yourself than it would be in Blackboard. Um, so I'm really just saying that again. I think from the teacher's point of view, it's reasonably user-friendly. And I think Moodle 2 is, um, I mean, I, I can't really compare Moodle 2 with the older forms of Moodle because I didn't use the old ones very much. But it seems to me that this sort of, from a back, coming from a Blackboard sort of perspective, that the, the way files are uploaded and stuff makes sense to me probably slightly more than it did in the old versions. Um, so that's, that's me, really. Yeah. Um, I was really interested in the thoughts of how you're going to achieve this. So I, re I ran a training session the other day with a group of teachers, specifically around developing their, their course. They all teach on the same course, different units each. Yeah. We're going to construct each of, the, each of the different topics they were working on. I said, right, you've got two hours, I'll come back and see how you do it. I came back and I had seven totally different units. Yeah. So they were all presented in different ways, different different structures, and their argument was, if I don't teach like that person, I teach like but I don't want to share my stuff with this person. And I said, I'm yeah. getting purposes to students. And it was all about how they can manage their stuff. So even, even in that sort of environment where you thought they were going to work collaboratively, yeah. they wouldn't do that. So I, mean, might I suspect that, I mean, I think perhaps it's perhaps slightly different with us in that those, those part-time staff are mostly teaching a small group of, you know, maybe three or four students. So it, it really, with them, it's about facilitating communication and collaboration between them and the students. And I mean, I'm sure they're doing that anyway. But it, it's when they're not, when they're not there. I mean, the, I think that perhaps the advantage, in a way, is that this, these staff are not there. So if we can provide them with some tools that are useful and make it easier for them to, to collaborate with the students when they're not there, uh, that's that's quite useful. Sorry, I'm, I'm sort of diverging from your your question slightly there, but um, but I, I, I think. Uh, I, I agree. I think in, in terms of getting staff who aren't on campus most of the time to collaborate on a, on a particular module, that, that is very, very difficult. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, yes. Sorry. I mean, on this point, I mean, all my staff, the, the teachers are, are part time. They just come to us for the lecture yeah. and we don't see them again. And so the way I've solved this potential problem was I provided an you know, effectively an e-learning technician who's there always to support them. Right. And that's, his, that's, that's all he does is support the... the yeah. But you find lecturers who really want to take some ownership and you have those who just want everybody to do everything for them. Yeah. So it's a, his job is to provide everything that they need but slowly help them become more independent over time. Yeah, I mean... I don't have 400. I no. Have, you know, 10 I mean... 12, but <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I think you, you, my view is that I mean, I, that's a large part of my role is to be available for those staff. It, I mean, I think there's going to be quite a, a divergence. There's going to be some staff who are interested, and, I, and initially I have to focus on them, and, and then hope, hopefully the students will sort of feed back and then put pressure on the other staff to start using stuff. Um, it, it's, yeah, I think um, there's not much more I can. You, you just have, I think you have to try and take an incremental approach. That you're never going to try and roll it out across to everyone all at once. Any other questions over there on the left? Uh, yeah, from uh, on, a, on a different angle, from one of the later slides you had, you said there were 
there's some administration functions that you were missing uh, in Moodle that you expect to be there from the platform. Yeah. Uh, what were the on the developer side? I'm also right. I mean, in terms of uh, managing courses and things like that, I mean, in, in Blackboard, I, I, you know, you can, if you want to duplicate a course, you can just copy it to a new code. I mean, you can do that in Moodle, but you have to export it and import it. Um, and, but, and, but there are also batch, there are batch built-in behind the scenes, batch tools that you can use to do that. So, I mean, for instance, every uh, academic year, I would roll over the courses, so I'd create a new instance of every course for the next year, and I could automate most of that fairly straightforwardly in, in Blackboard. Uh, and I'm sure it's perfectly possible to do in Moodle, but it's not something that's built in, if you like. Sorry, I didn't repeat the question. Yes. That was something I wanted to ask you as well. Uh, <laughs> just, it was just asking what was the relationship between what I'm doing and, and the internet. Um, it's, it's slightly st strange at the moment because there are also the marketing department are looking at redeveloping the internet as well. And I think currently what's going to happen is, is that the internet will become more internally facing web pages, so it will be more about sort of general staff information. I mean, at the moment, it uses SharePoint and it's sort of a folder structure, and it's it's kind of almost like a a, a network drive, and it's 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 very hard to find things, and and, and you, when you click on something, you wait for some time before it happens. Um, so, from my perspective, I think as far as the students are concerned, I w I want them to not have to worry about the internet at all, uh, because I want them to I want to focus everything through Moodle as much as possible, because I think. The key to people using it is that they have to use it, and they're using it all the time. They will then use it for other, naturally use it for other things. Um, do, do you have a, an, an internet at your we college? Do have, we do have an internet, and, and it's very much a, a question in our minds about you know the scale and how do you, how yeah. do you scale things up. So it's really interesting that, that yeah. what I'm hearing from you is that in a sense you're starting from almost kind of creating it as an overall environment for all the students. Yeah. Whereas we're almost coming at it from the opposite way and saying, let's, let's look at a small area and make that work really well and then think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think what, what I'm trying to do is, is to get just basic stuff in yeah. across the board yeah. uh, and then hopefully we can build the, the more sort of creative stuff on top of that. I mean, it's one of the real dangers is that, it's, that people are having to go to lots of different places. Yes, and yes. Not one yeah. Absolutely, sure. absolutely. Yeah, right. Um, and, you know, who are the stakeholders in that? And yeah. You know, I mean, it's a, fortunately for us, I mean, for the students, there are most of the stuff that's for them on the internet is in a few folders. So there's, you know, there's one for the BMUS, one for the NMUS, uh, and a few other bits. Right. And that's mostly it. So I think just sort of extracting that. I mean, most of the staff would be more than happy for everything else to go into Moodle, but that's slightly a political issue at the moment, so I need to figure out what will happen with that. Okay, thank you. I think there was a question. Nisha? Yep. Oh, what's over here? Okay. Well, I just want to pick up on something that both of you said, which was flashing through my mind. And before I said that, it's really nice to watch other people spelling out their decision making process mm -hmm. and being able yeah. to tick it off. Yeah, that's right. the one that we <laughs> Yeah. And, and the, the question is really where you finished on last question off, which is what are the other IT interests in your institution and how far are they on board with you and how far are there areas of resistance? Right. I mean, I think I'm quite fortunate in this respect because um, we only, I mean, being a small institution, we have four people in our IT department, so I, I, I know them all, which is a start. Um, uh, I think I think the, when I was appointed, I, I was deliberate. It was quite deliberate that I am placed in the School of Academic Studies rather than in the IT department, so that I'm s seem to be independent from them. Uh, but I, I wouldn't say that there's any resistance from them. But I think it's it it's amazing how even in a small institution you have different people going in different directions and. So the, I think the key players in this respect are the, the, the marketing department look after the, the web, external website and, and the internet currently uh, in terms of what goes into it. 
and then the, the IT people just manage manage the well, I say just the IT people manage the technical side of that. But um, so it's it's not too much of a problem in that respect. I'm very glad to say yeah, currently. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Small is good. Small is good. Yes. yes, I come from a large. Previously. Okay. You mentioned that you're producing your own in-house info sheets and stock out two videos. Why are you choosing to do that rather than using all the help stuff on the web? Right. That's okay. Video? You're asking why I'm producing my own how-to videos and info sheets. I think the key thing there is that my my version of Moodle will look different from someone else's, and I think. It, that will throw it would throw a lot of people, so I think it has to have screenshots of our system, and and I think it will also make you know the fact that it's got the college's logo on it and everything will make people feel more secure with it. I mean, I'm quite happy to to utilise what other people have done where, where appropriate, but it's um, but also I think there's probably a different focus about which aspects you want to push people onto first and in different places. So. Um, it's. I mean, perhaps I need to do more in terms of because there's only me. Uh, it's it's quite a large task, and perhaps you know, rather than not to produce information for some areas, I might be best to to to, to, to reuse some stuff from other places as well. The other thing, of course, is I've gone straight to Moodle two, and there's much less out there for Moodle two. Uh, that's what we're we're planning to do. I've, I've, uh, it does work quite nicely using the choice option in uh, in Moodle too. I mean, I think they used it for booking some of these section sessions. Though it, interestingly, it seemed to be set up slightly differently for each session here. Yes. Uh, but one of the things I've found playing with it is you can actually set it up so it's quite open, so that students can book on it and they can they can see who else has booked on it if you allow them to. Which, and I think that is what they want in most cases. So basically, you're replicating the piece of paper stuck on the wall. And it's, they have control over it, but it's online and, and it's organized. And, 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 and also, you can limit, you know, you can stop people scribbling the name on the bottom when there's no spaces left and that sort of thing. Okay. Thanks. I know uh, I'll come back to you in a sec. Two uh, more. Yeah. Yeah. Similar question to, to Helen on yeah. change management. Yes. Um, so, how are you planning to measure or be seen to measure success? Okay. Does you, people's minds change between now and the future? Yes. You, it's project management as a sort of change management. Right? Sure. I mean, okay, so you're asking what, what are they identified? How are we going to measure what we've yes. produced? Um, I think well, currently we don't have anything formal in place for doing that. Um, Strangely, I've had, I've had times I've had pressure from people who are scared that I'm trying to go too fast. Um, so, uh, I mean, my view is that what they're worried is that some pe the people who are keen will run off and the pe other people will get left behind, which will inevitably will happen. Yeah. But my argument would be that that's, you have to let that happen to some extent and, and not worry about it too much. You know, it, it's, a, it's, it's a toolkit. It's there to help people. And if, if, if someone finds it really helpful, you shouldn't stop them using it. And equally, if someone only finds one little bit of it useful, that's fine, you know, in, in my view. So um, I, think, I think we'll success will be measured in to what extent it gets used, I think, really. That's the key thing, you know. If, it's, if, in, if in a year's time, most of the students aren't paying any attention to it, then it hasn't been successful. So I think that's the, the key thing with trying to get everything it everything practical that we can get in there straightforwardly, even if it's got nothing specific to do with actual learn, teaching and learning that ties people into using the system. The challenge of the change, change process is yeah. you need to understand where we are today and where we're going to be in the future quite clearly so that you can do the cultural change, the behavioural change, yes. the training um, and things like that. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the Perhaps because we're stepping further back than a lot of people, and we don't have an existing VLE. It's it's the first we, the initial. We're actually at the stage of just getting people to engage with the technology and use use the technology, uh, and I think that's part one. 
and then, then we can move on to part two, which is trying to change the way that people view it and, 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 and engage with it. I mean, I think, I think the students will be strong allies in that respect, because I think the, the students are, are very keen, a lot of the students are very keen to use the technology. So, that, so this, they're pulling, and uh, hopefully that will push things along. Thank okay. you. Uh, we use choices for tutorials again, so right. it doesn't work in the real life. That will work quite well in our in our college because because this, this, you know this, because of the one to one teaching the students do have a lot of interaction with the staff and I, and I think they will say what they think so if it's good it will be good. Well, thank you for that. I think we've got about I make it about two minutes just really quickly. Um, we've heard from our two speakers who shared their their plans and their experiences with us, and I know lots of you here have got experience. Lots of gentlemen over there, from the, as you mentioned, any. Just let's have like three, three, let's say five from the group tips, your tips for making this change in culture, for helping the culture of change. One minute. Okay. And really it's a, 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 a double edge. Get your administrators on board. If you can allocate bicycles or place it on yes. choices, then use the system to do it. That gets your friends and buy you. Yeah. But don't use choices as a way to shut students out because no. it crashes the system. <laughs> No. Okay, thank you. Get the administration involved. Right. Yes, no, I got lots of support. Lots yeah. of support. Well, it's me. Inter within the organisation, or as the gentleman here mentioned, you know, in terms of who owns it? I, I, I'm in support in terms of every time somebody's got a problem, they, they know exactly okay. who they can go to yeah. and they're going to find somebody to Practical find. support. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you for that. Um, I wouldn't leave Mahara on the sidelines of something in the future because it's an enormous book. We, we tried launching Moodle by itself and was quite a little bit of a year, but yeah. we were launching it. And as soon as we brought Mahara in, we started modeling lessons using both right. teachers. We started to really ah. success. Right, that's very interesting. I mean, to be honest, the only reason I'm, I'm holding off on that is that I think if I introduced both in September, it would be too much and people would be going, oh, you know. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of maybe a year's time yeah. at the latest. But, yeah. Do people see them as separate? Um, they're doing the moment, but actually once they're actually shown the potential, yeah. all the questions have been to say, how can we do that? Yeah. Right. Once they've actually seen the yeah. examples, yeah. they want to buy into that structure. <coughs> Very reluctant to go down the Google track free drive, documents, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But actually, yeah. it is something that's actually living, the students are creating, and yes, we want that. Yes, yeah. yeah. Really so how do we see it? That they, they that's interesting, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for that. Uh, just carry on with the sort of support thing. I, mean, I think it's important to have the support, but because we've gone over a number of different sites. Right. We've got support for each of those sites daily, one person just purely does oh, the alpha okay. Moodle, but yes. it's still not enough to serve people what you need in each department here, you know, in a college site, like well, it's a champion. Yes, it's yes, a I'm hoping to get that. Yeah, that's how you've gone about it. That's how, that's yeah. Right. Well, the most successful site, 